Hello, this is Stephen Chow from the Sprint Application Developers Program. By now, I hope you had the chance to explore the Sprint Developer Sandbox and the APIs that are available. Today, I'm going to provide a screencast of the phone emulator. The whole purpose behind the phone emulator is to assist with developers by alleviating the issue of requiring a Sprint phone to use the API. Let's go visit the Sprint Phone Emulator website at sprintdevelopersandbox.com slash dev sandbox slash phones slash create. So you can either bookmark the URL that we just used or bookmark the URL that was just created. In this case, test underscore 26. So in a quick view, this web page is set up in two section and it looks very similar to the getting started web page in the sandbox. The top half is more in informative with the main information being what tests MDN to use. The bottom section is the web application that will return the data um, back. So let's take a closer look at the test MDN that number that we'll use, which in this case is test underscore 26. Generally, alpha characters are not allowed in the MDN but a recent update has made the string test underscore a recognizable string that the service will accept and return these emulated responses through this web application. Now, let's go take a closer look at the console. As you can see, only three services are made available, and then the main two fields to use is the query text box and the response text box. We take a look at the resources. Again, only location, SMS, and presence are made available. And data can be returned in JSON, JSONP, plain text, or as XML. So let's, so let's go send a few test queries um, through this, this emulator. So taking a closer look at the query, you'll notice that your key is not a valid user key. Since this is an emulator, the keys will not be validated. Therefore, do not worry about using this emulator as it will not deduct from your DIP. Also, since this is again an emulator, the opt-in workflow is unnecessary in this case. Therefore, the, therefore no errors will ever result in not having this test MDN number associated to a specific key. So with that, let's go send a sample location call. So currently we have this configured to return the, the MDN's location and return the data as a JSON. Currently the phone is located at 39.1 um, and negative 94.5. So we'll hit send and the return JSON payload says exactly that. Now we can easily change the format to XML, which will change the location to return to return XML data format. And all you do need to do is hit send, and the format is reformatted to send XML. In addition, you can always copy this URL and send it through the browser, and the response is plain XML as requested. Now let's go try moving the location and See how that works. You can easily move the phone to New York City. And then we can move this phone to Hell's Kitchen, which is currently at 40.75 and negative 73.99. Let's go request the location again, but this time in plain text. And as you can see, the location is 40.75 and negative 73.99. Changing the location is as simple as moving a pin. Let's, let's try the SMS API next. Just switch the resource over to SMS. You notice the key is still there, unchanged. The MDN is unchanged. Now we include the field sender name, console, and the message. The message can be updated through the message text box. Let's just do the standard hello world. Now please notice that spaces and other punctuation are transformed through URL encoding. This is a common issue that we have heard about, and so make sure you send your messages 
uh, through a URL encoder first before sending it through the wire. Let's send this SMS now. So the SMS is sent. We have a response. This is message number 16. And when the message is updated, Hello World is now appearing through our SMS re uh, receiver box. So let's try another one. Hello World. This is a test of the, the emulator. Happy face. Again, notice the URL encoding. Hit send. Test just got incremented. And then this is the test message. It's received. Now let's try out presence. So the phone has two states. It's either on or off. So we will send a SMS to check the presence of the phone and it should be reachable. Yes, it is reachable. Let's turn off the phone now. And the SMS should be unreachable. Now since, since having the phone on and off also affects location and SMS, those servers too are, are also affected. With the phone turned off, the location should be untrackable. Let's check that. And yes, you receive, you receive a location error as specified. Now with location, you can always move the phone. So let's just move this phone to Tokyo. Let's place it in Harajuku. So the next time we request the phone location, it should appear in Harajuku. Now let's visit the SMS. Now since the phone is off, it should never receive the SMS since the phone's turned off. So is the SMS disabled? And we'll send that SMS in plain text. And we'll send the message, but it will not update automatically until the phone is turned on. So let's turn on the phone again. So now location is enabled and SMS is enabled. And yes, we just received the SMS that we just sent. Let's check location now. And location is indeed in Harajuku. Let's check the presence. And it is reachable. So I hope this video will help you out in your development. You can always create multiple phones to, to test out uh, for your app. Thanks.